she's got an incredible amount of get up and go very active and every time i've ever talked to her like she's boots on the ground she's actually implementing for herself and just like doing the hard work but also like juggling a million different balls at once and that's kind of like what it takes to be a successful indie right you are now listening to the creative juice podcast brought to you by entrepreneur.io What's up, Indies? Welcome back to the Creative Juice Podcast. This is episode 308, and in this episode, we're going to be recapping some tips that we've been giving you guys over the last few months. We've talked a lot about modeling and finding the things out there that are working in the wild, but in this episode, we want to take a slightly different spin on that and talk about indie wins in the music industry, things that we've been seeing in the wild and in our community and bring them to you guys and hopefully give you some inspiration on indies that are out there crushing it. I'm your host, Jack McCarthy. With me, as always, is Circa. Cirque, what's up, dude? Are you ready to celebrate some wins? I'm ready to celebrate the dubs, friend. It's been a while since we've done an episode where we just kind of like solely talked about things that we're seeing going on in, in music, specifically like cool indies that are inspiring us or you know, potentially people that were indies at the time that they were inspiring us. I, I, I'll lead with that disclaimer that I don't know 100% for certain if all of the artists that we're going to talk about today are still independent, but that doesn't really matter. At the time that we were seeing cool things happen with them, they were. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be good to go through this. I think all too, like, you know, we just, we pump out a lot of podcasts, right? We're past 300 now. We talk a lot about strategies and for the average listener, it might be difficult to like, you know, just like we get like every quarter in the indie pro group, someone new will come in who's like, does anyone have proof that any of this has ever worked for anybody? <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to do the equivalent of that post thread on the podcast just to give people that sort of vision of the future, you know, what hard work can actually result in. For sure. Yeah. And so much of what I think we're going to talk about today Part of the reason that I find some of this so interesting is the artists that we kind of have in mind to talk about here, some of them are from within our community, some of them have been in our community, some of them are not in our community or at our agency or in our programs, and all of that is good because it lends credence to this idea that if you work hard, and you focus down on some smart marketing, that you'll do well and that it looks different for everyone, which I think is really interesting here. And there's definitely... Uh, some different facets for each one of these artists that we're going to talk about. So I'd love to kick us off with someone that we've briefly mentioned on the podcast probably numerous times, and but never really dove too deep into what he's been out there doing. But it's been really impressive from the day that I discovered him and what he was out there doing. And he's become a very public face and a public figure and champion for independent music. And that's La Russell. Yeah, he's he's the goat, dude. He's like a pure play, dude. Like he really gets it. He doesn't trust the industry. He's you would think that like maybe I'm like surrounded by people who share my dislike and distrust of of the music industry, but there's like a range of opinions. Yeah, it's a spectrum. Yeah, exactly. I'm a bit more on the hardcore doom prepper like <laughs> side of things where I just really think that they're max awful. I think La Russell brings that ideology and theory to the forefront to the public and shows them like, here's why, here's it in practice, here's what I'm doing instead. Just a real big champion for the sort of indie everything thesis. Yeah. You know, one of the things that impressed me from day one about La Russell was his positioning and the work that he did to make a market for himself with the offers that he was putting out there, specifically around the shows that he was promoting and the, you know, uh, pay what you think it's worth kind of setup that he had going on when he was really like starting to generate a buzz. I just found that to be so interesting because he went out there and was just like, this is the way that I want to do it. This is the way that I think my audience is going to respond the best to me making an offer. And I think he executed that in a way 
that was so natural, which is not something that you often see with artists, like mastering the concept of urgency, mastering the concept of scarcity and exclusivity and offer building. And I know no artist is ever made overnight. <laughs> and uh, the same is true for, for LaRusso. I know he's been out there working for a long, long time before he really became kind of like this spotlight champion for indies. But it really impressed me how once he was in the spotlight, he was embodying like a sense of offer creation, at least from like a, you know, from the heart of a direct response marketer, I was just like, hell yeah, this guy rules like, from day one. And that's not often what you see when people are in the spotlight. At least I don't feel like that about a lot of artists when once they're in the spotlight. Yeah. Just to recap, for those of you who are listening who don't know who the rest of it is, like hip hop artist from California and really started marketing himself heavily, you know, about a year and a half ago. And what he did was, first of all, he has an insanely high production volume where he's put out 30 albums since then. So hundreds and hundreds of songs, which means that his, and this is stuff that we fight tooth and nail to get our indies to practice like every day inside the indie pro group is like, first of all, let's drop the barometer for like, how crazy do we need to focus on the production of any individual song? Let's prioritize catalog over individual songs. And let's stop being perfectionists about like when a song should be released. Like you should be releasing early and often. So a high volume of music coming out from him. The second thing he did was a high volume of content. He made micro content for every song, multiples. And I think like this is the hardest thing to tell indies is that like, look, man, like, you know, one piece of content for one song is not enough. I want to see multiple pieces of content for 30 songs. Like, that's where we should jump off. So we really got behind like high volume content and just putting it out there, just shipping and shipping and shipping. And then when it came time for him to do shows, the one unique element is that he created like a venue in his mom's backyard. And that was his, that's where he's going to do shows after being frustrated with like the process of booking venues and his offer based system, which is he accepts offers from people who want to attend his shows. It could be $0. It could be hundred thousand dollars. Like whatever you're willing to offer to come attend one of these shows, you submit a bid. What that does is it allows you to always have maximum capacity shows for the maximum amount of revenue. So if it's the case that it's very difficult to get people to buy tickets right now, you'll just accept all the low bids. You could, you know, maybe, maybe the show is free for a lot of people, but at least your show is packed, which creates the perception of demand. So good. Right. But if it's the case that you get a shitload of bids and you're not going to have any trouble packing that show, then you can go for max value. You can accept only the highest bids or a combination brilliant idea, super brilliant, because all too often, basically people either ruin or, you know, succeed in their efforts to sell something before they even offer it by setting the price. You can be wrong about setting the price and thereby not have enough demand, or you can be wrong about setting the price and thereby not have enough supply. And what he did was he just did away with all of that and said, I'm not going to set a price. It creates curiosity because it's like, well, even if I have zero dollars, I can still submit a bid and explain why I should be let to, into the show. It's such a brilliant move on so many different layers. And so he ended up like having packed shows in his mom's backyard this consistently as a result. Then he did the same thing with music. He said, you submit a bid on this music or you submit a bid. I think he put out a an inspirational book lit and just, you know, so he's creating lots of products and he's being very creative about the offer. Just like you give me an offer. I have a product. You make me an offer. So just very brilliant business mind. And it just goes to show you that like, you know, he's, he's gotten a lot of attention and success off of the back of this, but he's not slowing down. He's not resting on his laurels. He's still putting out 
almost like an album every like two to three weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's really insane. Uh, that's why I wanted to lead with La Russell for this episode. It's just like there's so much to unpack there. We could honestly do a we could probably do a whole episode just talking about this. But if you've been listening to anything that Cirque and I have been saying over the last six months about offer creation and pricing and products and making sales and building an audience and putting out content really like kind of spanning all of the topics that we talked about towards the tail end of like the latter half of 2023. La Russell is a really great artist to look at for inspiration of all of that and also thinking outside the box and making it yours and making it something that is unique to your base, to your audience, to create a market that is just yours. Yeah. And obviously, like, we can't take credit. He's not from our communities. Literally. No, no. Thought of this all himself. Just a brilliant operator and someone you should draw a lot of inspiration from. It's a big ask to say, create more music than you ever thought was going to be feasible. Create more content around that music than you thought was feasible as well. And if it's too big an ask for you, you probably shouldn't do it because that is the competitive landscape we're in now. The next artist that I want to talk about in a similar vein, his success has a lot to do with his music. He's a very smart marketer, but I want to specifically talk about an amazing offer that he made. It's an indie in our community, RJ Thompson. And what I think is really cool about his story, back in 2020, RJ cracked cold traffic, meaning he was able to create advertising campaigns on social media, selling to a cold audience who had never heard from him before, never heard of him before, didn't know who he was. And the way that he did it was by creating an offer that was compelling and exciting and intriguing and encouraged people, compelled people that didn't know who he was to want to buy. And the way that he did it was his record that was called Lifeline. He positioned this as the first augmented reality record and he sold it that way that was one of the big sort of like feature benefit points of this record was that it's the first of its kind and it evolves over time with you and that was one of the big things i read in an article uh, an interview that he did he was talking about saying like i wanted to make a record so that when f a fan bought it it wasn't the same in a few months as it was the day that they received it in the mail. It evolved with time with them. It was something they, they could experience differently as time went on. And he had an app that they would download with it. And when you scan the album, you know, the app would kind of change over time. And I just thought that that was, I, I remember back in 2020 thinking that that was so, so cool. And I was so excited and proud of him. And uh, I'm really excited to hear more about what he's doing right now a little tease to hopefully having him on the show here sometime in 2024. But I wanted to shout out RJ because I think in terms of inspiration around offer creation, especially offer creation around an album or an EP or any kind of launch, these are the kinds of things that you can think about to stand out, to make your product different, to separate yourself from the market. It's an offer of one. It's yours. It's unique. Yeah, I think also like RJ's got an incredible amount of what we call fit fawn, which is figure it the fuck out in this. And it's a value that we treasure in the community because like being independent requires you to be self-reliant. Self-reliance is about being able to source accurate information and execute on it without much outside help. RJ came into our community, but wasn't very vocal in the community until he had wins to share. Yeah which is interesting, right? Like, you know, like some indies come into the community, we're, we're working with them, they're very active in the group, and then the wins come. With him, it was like he popped out kind of after binging on our content, going through trainings and implementing, and only later did we find out about like, oh, wow, like <laughs> you're a success, you did this. And, and we don't really, you know, we don't know a whole lot about you up until that point. So, you know, using our ultimate album launch funnel concept and using the playbook there, he was able to get to billboard twice in the span of like 18 months, which is insane. So we love our lurkers, people in, in uh, the indie pro group who just aren't very vocal. 
it's always nice to see one pop out and say like, Hey, this helped me or in his case, like helped him get a pretty remarkable result. Very well known in the UK. I was talking to someone at the CD baby conference who worked for CD baby, who was like, Oh my God, you know, RJ Thompson, like this, this, and that, you know, in the UK is pretty well known. Super cool, super cool story. And a, a lot of get up and go behind RJ, you know, like he didn't require a whole lot of hand holding to achieve these massive results. And that just speaks to like his incredible creativity and, and ingenuity. You know, I, I love that you brought up his fit fun and resourcefulness, because I think if there's an attribute that I would love to sort of celebrate on this episode, in addition to his creativity around that offer that he made for Lifeline, I'd love to celebrate and encourage everyone to embody resourcefulness in 2024. In case you still need a resolution for your new year, resourcefulness and figuring it out is a really good one to work to hold within yourself in the work that you're doing. And I, I would argue that it's probably like the most attainable resolution that you could possibly make. It's like, I'm going to be more resourceful and I'm going to try to figure stuff out because that's not setting yourself up for any kind of ridiculous, unachievable or potentially unachievable goal. It doesn't even rely on an outcome for you to hit that sort of resolution or goal. It's just like, I'm going to be more resourceful. I'm going to try to figure things out as I go. I think that that's such an incredible attribute to have and, and more indies should embody it. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm psyched to talk to him. Yeah, me too. Me too. You know, the next indie I want to talk about is uh, another indie from our community, and that's Laura Kidd. She's amazing. Laura was actually an IndieX client a few years ago as well. She worked with us at the agency, her and her husband, Tim. We worked with her on her music project. And in 2023, early 2023, she put out a record under uh, a different project name called Obey Robots. And that reached top 20 charts in the UK. And so much of that was driven by her ability to build a world for her fans and have really strong storytelling. And that's something that we've seen with her over the years in the community. And we worked when we worked with her at the agency. And that's why I specifically wanted to mention her on this episode is her ability to craft a narrative and speak to her fans and build a community with them is so strong that it helped her to drive sales for this record all independently, drive sales for this record through a fan base that she had built up, you know, over time. And this was, like I said, Obey Robots was a project that was kind of, I won't, I won't call it off to the side, but it was under the umbrella of sort of her overall brand as an artist. It was a duo project that she was working on with another artist. And I think that that's super cool to see because it's something that a lot of artists struggle with, especially if they branch off and do side projects or a band breaks up and they're going off solo. Maintaining interest from a base or an audience can be really hard. But Laura's ability to communicate with her fans and build narratives is so strong that it catapulted this record into success pretty much from the day she launched it, which is really, really cool. Yeah, it's also, you know, like sh she's got an incredible amount of get up and go very active. And every time I've ever talked to her, like she's boots on the ground. She's actually implementing for herself and just like doing the hard work, but also like juggling a million different balls at once. And that's kind of like what it takes to be a successful indie, right? Like you don't often see indies who are like, and this is why we always tell people like early on, you shouldn't be so worried about like trying to find like a team because like, teams kind of come when you are capable of being a team of one, like only after a sustained period of that, are you even, is it even going to be helpful for you to have a team? Will you know what to tell that team to do? And will there be a reason for the team to exist in the first place? And I think she's a good example of, of that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The pen friend brand is definitely strong. I'm super excited to see what she does this year as well. I'm really, really hype about it. The next artist I want to talk about isn't part of our community, but he is a good friend of mine. If you hang around Instagram, and especially if you hang around like music and comedy together, you may have come across some of his viral content. And that's my friend Tom McGovern. He's hilarious. I've known Tom since high school. We'll link to some of his content in the show notes. And Tom is 
someone who does a really great job speaking of brand of he knows his brand has been so natural from day one in my opinion he's an actor and a comedian and a musician and all of that kind of comes together to fuse this sort of musical persona in the content that he creates online and it's funny and it's very him and he doesn't take himself too seriously i guess you can't when you're a comedian i don't know but he doesn't take it too seriously and he's willing to kind of stretch the boundaries of what he does with the uh with the music content he creates especially with his videos and i think it's just really impressive the audience that he's built up over time he's in a band called wolves of glendale and they're also you know super super funny uh kind of it kind of all encompasses this music and comedy sort of thing that he has going on he was on american idol back in 2021 i believe it was but he had been building an audience up long before that and he's just super from a from a creative perspective i would encourage indies that have been listening to me and Cirque sort of going on about modeling content and finding things that are working well in the wild i think tom is someone who's really good at seeing things that he likes and then finding new spins to stuff that is working online. I've never watched something from Tom and thought like, oh, he's blatantly copying something else. But I know that he's an inspired sort of person where like the things that he consumes inspire him and then kind of fuel his creative output in some sort of way. And so I think that's something that indies can definitely learn. Yeah, I've, I first learned about him when he went viral a couple of times and he's been in my TikTok ever since super funny and really musically talented like you rarely get that combo of like they they they're really funny with with skits and concepts and also just like kind of freak musicians at the same time but amazing you know amazing music despite it being hilarious yeah for sure for sure for sure i'd love to have tom on the show we should do that sometime that would be super fun another artist from our community that I think we should talk about who's been having sort of like consistent wins recently, especially since the summer is Taylor Bradshaw, who's been doing a really great job with the customer creation side of things. Taylor has been in our community for quite a long time. And I know he's good friends with Praveen, who's on our success team. They make music together and they hang out quite a good bit in New York. And so I think Taylor's definitely someone who in our community is not only like out there doing it, but he's also very vocal within our community in a, in a different way. And that like, he's one to talk through and sort of mastermind his process with other artists. Like we've seen him doing that for years. Yeah. It, it's funny because like, he's still in the community asking for help where he needs it or other opinions. And he's also there helping people through the challenges that he's even recently overcame. So super important part of the community. And he went through Founder. He got the hang of the free push shipping and handling funnel model and was very unafraid in scaling it. And it's kind of funny. It's like peaks and troughs, right? Like he cracked that. He got to like $200 a day spend, was creating shitloads of customers, was almost like, and then I think the peak of that era was him saying like, I think I'm ready to go full-time music. And then he kind of like experienced a few tumbles which is very typical of in the investment and trading world. Like as soon as you feel that euphoria, that's probably the top. <laughs> yeah. Even in like the entrepreneurial spaces, like how many times have you talked to friends who are like, oh, I think my side hustle is finally at a place where I can quit my day job. And then you kind of, it kind of steps back a little bit and it's like, oh, I'm not ready to take the leap yet. Yeah. And it's cool because he's back up now from that trough and he's like tripled his daily ad spend creating more customers than ever before and constantly figuring out the next problem. So he's not just resting on his laurels. Like he's cracked customer creation. He is now vigorously trying to figure out customer ascension and scale scale, meaning like customer ascension, meaning like, how do I make more money from the existing customers I've already acquired scale? Meaning like, how do I scale up my operation so I can handle customer acquisition? That's two, three X the volume that I'm doing now. And so he's asking intelligent questions like about hiring because his his uh, grandma is like helping him fulfill a lot of this stuff right now. Dude, that's a sentence that you don't hear often. <laughs> yeah. 
which is that's 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 like the russell right the russell's family is helping him do fulfillment it's it's very similar so yeah like just very tenacious and very unyielding in his pursuits so definitely worthy of a big shout out because he's definitely proven to himself capable of doing things that he probably didn't think possible before you know a year ago you know i love what you mentioned there about like taylor being an artist who is always looking to solve the next problem because isn't that kind of business like that's sort of the game a hundred percent business yeah you make a new problem and you solve it and then you find the next problem by solving the first one and so on and so forth until you die <laughs> no I, I, in all seriousness though that's kind of like that's kind of the game and the challenge and the fun and i think it's really cool how willing and excited taylor is getting his hands dirty in that way like that's definitely inspiring to me 100 percent, yeah yeah i love it another artist out in the wild that i want to talk about as we kind of wrap up here is a band called gray wind they're not in our community but uh we're friendly with them by association their manager casey cavalier and lesser matters manages them and they're a group a band that has mastered their hook and we talked about the idea of like getting your hook right a few episodes ago and that's why i wanted to talk about them they started going viral on tiktok and instagram a few years ago and they really like smashed it out of the park with their content and the hook that they were using to get people's attention which was this idea of like this is what an irish emo band sounds like they're a band from ireland and they just like took that and ran with it when they saw it working. And I think what that did and what indies can learn from this is it gave them sort of like a foothold on social organically to start building up audience and building up audience and kind of have this snowball effect happening. And I think the benefit here, um, and I'm glad you mentioned like scaling and building team Cirque because now like as they start to build up a team around them, What's cool is like they've gotten that part not totally figured out forever. I'm not saying that they won't ever need to come up with new hooks. Of course they will. But they found formulas that work for them and that feel good for them. And now they can take it and expand upon it. And it's not something where they have to have a team come in and figure out like, okay, how do we generate an audience for you? Like they've gotten content creation down. They've got messaging you know, down and able to be then molded and continue to kind of evolve from there. And they can use that into future releases that they make. They can use that for future sales that they do, things that they do to take their fans, you know, deeper and deeper into their ecosystem. And I think that's really cool and kind of a a key lesson for indies to look at and maybe get inspired by and model a little bit when they're thinking about their own content. Like this is a group that I think has done it really, really well. Yeah, 100%. Well, I hope you guys dug this. I hope celebrating some of the wins is something that we can do more often on the show, especially like indie wins in the community, indie wins outside of the community. And I hope that you found it helpful in as we celebrate these wins, there's lessons that all of us can take from them, from audience generation to being fearless about your marketing to, you know, masterminding out loud to sharing your own wins to figuring out how to make better offers. You can sort of see in all of these examples of indies out there crushing it, there's a lesson to be learned in each of them. And so I hope that when you see other artists out in the wild, that you can start to think about like, okay, what are they doing well? What can I learn from them? Instead of, you know, I think there's a tendency or a habit for artists to compare themselves and be like, well, why is that person doing better than me? Why is their their music isn't as good as mine? And comparing in a negative light, what I would encourage every single creative to do instead is to look and say like, okay, if this person is more successful than me in some way, even if you have you know no idea what the back end of their business looks like, if you see an artist out in the wild and you're like, why are they growing? Why does it seem like they're growing faster than I am? Or wh- why does it seem like their record is crushing it and mine isn't? Ask yourself, well, what can I learn? Instead of like, ah, oh, pitting yourself against another artist, just look and say like, well, what can I learn here? What's, where are the lessons? And if you can do that, man, that sets you up to catapult yourself into the next best thing that you can do. Yeah. It's also like success leaves clues, right? 
and what's very clear across all these cases is that these people like really put forth massive effort and there are literally no shortcuts. Like if you're not an indie pro and you were thinking about joining and you thought like, oh, these guys have a shortcut to success in the music industry, like we largely don't. And we largely are going to tell you things that you probably could have surmised yourselves. Like we got a few tricks up our sleeves. We're digital marketers. So we know things that other people kind of don't in a lot of cases as it pertains to digital marketing. But in terms of like the fundamentals of what's going to make you successful, you know, it's pretty clear and obvious and it, it requires massive effort. All of these people put forth that massive effort. And so if you really want to make a go of this thing and you want to make music your career, just like starting any business, it's going to require you to be in the 99th percentile of effort. So be ready for that. Commit to it. Yeah, go get it. That's a good way to leave off this episode. Comparison is the thief of joy and the thief of success. You got to go get it. So I hope you guys do. And I hope that this was a good episode. We'll catch you guys next time on Creative Juice. Peace out. Peace out.